Welcome to Outdoor Photo Workshop series on outdoor photography and digital workflows. My name is Jason Hahn, one of OPW's instructors, and this month's topic is white balance, what it is, how to set it, and how it will affect the look of your images. If you have questions about this tutorial or have ideas for future segments, please send them in. You can email us at info at outdoorphotoworkshops.com. So what exactly is white balance? The short answer is, your white balance setting is a tool built into your camera to help get the colors in your images as accurate as possible. If you are unfamiliar with the white balance setting on your camera, now is a good time to pause this video, grab your camera and your camera's manual, and make sure you know how to change the setting. Don't worry, we'll wait for you to get back. Okay, so let's start talking white balance. So how does this all work? First, remember I'm not a physicist, nor do I play one on TV. For this section, I am merely a translator, so no hate mail if I mess up on the translation. So here is the official explanation. I'll translate this into English in a moment. First, the white balance setting is based on the color temperature of the light you are shooting in. Color temperature is measured on the Kelvin scale, and is based on the color of light as it is emitted from a hypothetical black body. The color of light emitted will change based upon the temperature of the black body. Further, there are three primary colors that form white light, red, green, and blue, which exist in various proportions in any lighting situation, depending upon the color or temperature of the light. The higher the temperature, the more blue light exists. When the color temperature is low, there is more red. Okay, now get that glazed over expression off your face as I try to repeat that again in English. Sort of. Imagine you heat up a chunk of steel, say, a horseshoe. As it heats up, it begins to glow, first red, and then as it gets hotter, gradually it takes on more of a blue hue. This is the idea behind color temperature. The temperature of the steel changes the color of the light it emits. The cooler the fire, the lower the temperature of the light emitted, which results in redder flames. The hotter the fire, the higher the temperature of the light emitted, and the bluer the flames. The temperature in this model is measured in Kelvin. Anyone out there remember this from high school chemistry? Don't worry. The Kelvin scale is just a temperature scale. What is important for us to know as photographers is that any light below 4000 Kelvin starts to appear reddish to our eyes, Anything above 7,000 Kelvin or so starts to appear bluish. But, like many things in photography, we talk about things a little bit backwards when it comes to color. We use terms like warmer to refer to reddish or yellowish light in an image, and cooler to refer to bluish or overcast light. We think in terms of blue tones being cool like ice, and yellows being warm like the sun. In reality, the science of color temperature is the opposite, where red is a colder temperature than blue. Just think back to our fire example. An orange flame from a candle is much cooler than the blue flame from a cutting torch. But don't worry about changing the way you think and talk about light. It's okay to talk in those terms, after all everyone else does. Just remember when it comes to white balance, the lower the number in Kelvin, the redder the light. The higher the number, the bluer the light. The important thing out of all this is to recognize that the color of light varies depending on its source, and that we can adjust our camera to compensate for it, and make our reds look red, our green look green, and make our whites whiter. Now let's get back to the photography side of things. We take photos at all times of day, in all kinds of light. When you shoot in different light conditions, like say, early morning, or late morning, or midday, or overcast light, or in the shade, you'll see that the light will have a different look to it, sometimes more yellowish, sometimes more bluish. In digital photography, our digital sensors don't have the capabilities that our eyes do to compensate for these shifts in the color temperature of light. We really don't notice the warmness or coolness of light unless we train our eyes to do so. However, these color shifts become pretty obvious in our images. So for example, in a waterfall scene, instead of your rocks looking bluish gray because it is shaded for an overcast day, we want it to look like, well, the way it is supposed to. Using the white balance setting corrects for the type of light you're shooting in so your colors look right. Okay, so having given you the proper answer of color accuracy, let's be a little more blunt. In reality, what we really want as photographers is to be able to control the colors in our images. We aren't always looking so much for accuracy as we are vibrancy and color saturation. The white balance can also become a creative tool and be used to add warmth or coolness to your images or even more drastic color effects. The sunrise scene is a good example of white balance's effect on your color. On the auto setting, you can see that the scene is somewhat blue toned, but as we switch between the settings, you can see that the color shift. Most accurate was this custom white balance setting, but in all honesty I like the cloudy setting the best with its rich orange color. By controlling your white balance you can render your colors to the ideal you have in your head. 
which grand sometimes may be a slight little departure from reality. And that is all okay. We are creating images, and rich saturated color is what we generally find appealing in outdoor photography. So in a nutshell, with the white balance setting, we are removing color casts created by the environmental conditions or artificial light source illuminating our subjects. Using the white balance setting helps us render our colors more closely to what our eyes see or to what the colors would be in a specific temperature of light. The white balance setting is a very important tool to understand and take advantage of. Now how do we change this on our camera? Somewhere on your camera you should have a button or menu setting for white balance, usually abbreviated WB. How you change this will depend on your camera model. I know you know how to do this with your camera since we waited while you went and read your manual earlier. So for example, on a Canon 1D Mark III you will see your current white balance setting in the lower screen. To change it all you do is press the set button on the camera's back and rotate the dial left or right to choose from the different white balance settings. Some cameras also allow you to compensate or adjust each setting. Again, you'll have to read your manual for the specifics on this. You'll have several icons to choose from. Each of these icons is intended to represent the type of light you're shooting in or give you the ability to override your camera's white balance settings. The order of the icons in your camera may be a little different than shown here, but the icons themselves are pretty universal. These are more similar to the Canon set of icons, but hey, that's what I shoot with, so that's what I had to work with. An icon varies a little bit from these, for example the custom icon may be a capital PRE instead, but you get the general idea. The first icon, AWB, stands for Auto White Balance, and in most cases, Auto will work pretty well. On some cameras, the icon may just simply be in a capital A or may read Auto. When you select Auto White Balance, your camera checks the scene you have framed and makes a best guess at the color temperature of the ambient light. The problem is a lot of cameras are limited in the color temperature range they use, typically somewhere between 3 and 7,000 Kelvin. This is fine for a lot of lighting situations, but if we look at this chart of color temperatures, you can see that heavy shade may have a temperature of 9 to 10,000 Kelvin, which is very blue, while tungsten or incandescent lighting can be as low as 2,500 Kelvin, both well outside this range. That is why the other settings are so useful. We'll come back to Kelvin in a moment, and custom also. Now let's look at the other presets. Starting with tungsten and moving to shade, we move from redder to bluer light. In other words, the color temperature increases. When you select a white balance setting, your camera will add more blue or more yellow to your colors to offset the temperature of the light and bring it to a daylight standard, usually about 5500 Kelvin. So for example, you change your setting from auto to cloudy which on your particular camera then assumes the available light is around 6500 Kelvin or so. Your camera says, wow, he is shooting in some bluish light, so I'll make everything in the shot a little more reddish. Seriously, it says that. So, in this elk shot, we start off on auto, and we change it to cloudy. Now let's see that again. Auto, now cloudy. Not a huge difference, right? Both look pretty good. Okay, now, side by side. See how on the right the grasses are more golden? Although they both look pretty good, the right side is probably closer to what I saw at the time and has a warmer feel to the image. By selecting cloudy, more yellow was infused into the image, removing the slight blue cast that was appearing in the overcast light that was, this was taken in when auto or daylight settings were selected. Now a couple of important things to remember. White balance should be based on the light your subject is in, not the light you are standing in. If you are standing in the shade but the elk you're photographing in is in the sun, don't change your white balance to shade. Next, remember to always flip back to auto when you finish up with a subject. This ensures that the next time you don't accidentally shoot on an incorrect white balance if you forget to change it in the heat of the moment. So this wraps up part one of our white balance video. We'll continue in part two with manually setting your white balance, how to take a custom white balance, and some other good information. Be sure to close this video and open up the next one to view the rest of this tutorial.